Rejoice, brothers, for the wolf time is nigh. Today on Review Rollout, we're talking about Codex Supplement Space Wolves. Anvil of War! Review Rollout! Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today on Review Rollout, we're going to be looking at the Codex Supplement Space Wolves to be used in conjunction with Codex Space Marines. Uh, we were sent over a copy from our amazing sponsors at Red Dragon in Ottawa, Orleans, Ontario. Big, big thank you to you guys. You guys have supported the channel so much. And uh, if you guys haven't, check out our, uh, our links in the video description below. Uh, and you can check out their web store. They have tons of stock of Warhammer 40,000, tons of other Games Workshop products and other amazing games um, and card games and all that kind of great stuff. And great hobby supplies as well. So definitely check them out. Um, also want to remind everyone that if you're enjoying this content today, please like, share, and subscribe. You'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen throughout the video, there's a little Anvil of War icon. If you click on it, it'll give you link options to uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and click the little bell notification button uh, if you want to be notified when we're putting out new videos. So without further ado, let's get to the table and crack open this beautiful book. And here it is, the Space Wolf Supplement in all its glory. You'll notice that it says Supplement on here now. Um, this is a new thing for us Space Wolf players. No longer do we have all of our um, resources in one book. Now this is used in conjunction with the Space Marine Codex. So uh, going forward, we're going to see all of the Space Marine chapters and uh, different divisions. Uh, I think probably with the exception of the Grey Knights, uh, just because they don't have the same units at all, for the most part, um, in these supplements. And they're beautiful. Um, it is a bit of a change. It's something to get used to. And it did remove some things. So I'm going to do uh, what will be a a quicker rundown of the contents of this book. Um, I don't want to end up having a, an hour and a half, two hour uh, video because of this. So uh, instead of reading through every single rule, we're just going to do some summaries and I'm just going to pick out the highlights, uh, my favorite, uh, my favorite stratagems, my favorite relics and so on. And uh, yeah, we're not going to cover every single detail of this book, but starting to open the book up, First thing we notice is there's a lot of new there's a lot of new art. Um, I mean the cover art has been changed. Um, they're, they're adding a lot of this beautiful grimdark um, artwork that uh, we're seeing transition from the um, from the ninth edition rulebook, and it's pretty beautiful. I mean some stuff has been recycled, but uh, and we just have all of our lore talks about um, you know the sagas, the deeds. Here we have Bjorn. This is, you know, Space Wolf Dreadnought uh, being interred. It looks like that's what's happening there. And then we have the Great Companies. This is a beautiful piece of artwork. I just recently got the uh, the T-shirt from the official GW merchandise store that has that on it. And it's got something cool written around it. And it, I love it. So just came in the other day. Um, we also have... Yeah, just a brief description. Talks about the uh, the leaders of each company. It's pretty cool. Talks about the Curse of the Wolfen. This is new. We have, um, it talks about the, the Wolf Spear. Uh, it's, it's actually a successor chapter. So Space Wolves now have successor chapters. Uh, there are rules included in the book um, for how to run your successor chapters as there were in other, um, in other supplements. But... This is, uh, this is big news for Space Wolf players because, uh, I mean, most of them are supposed to be Primaris, but there is some indication throughout the lore uh, that uh, Logan sent some Firstborn over to uh, reinforce them. So uh, it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's, and that's something new if, uh, if players want to make a uh, kind of a feral Space Marine Legion that they, uh, um, yeah, custom customize on their own. Uh, yeah, here we have some Warzone talk. We've seen this in every, uh, they talk about all the different Warzones and all the, uh, in all the supplements and books so far released for 9th edition. This is a really cool, um, picture and it's just a little, uh, 
description of the great company of Logan Grimnar. But here we have Logan sitting up on top of his uh, his sort of dais, and then you've got uh, yeah, you've got all the characters, the champions of the chapter. You've got Ulrich, you've got Njal, you've got uh, Ragnar coming to see him, maybe to seek some help or uh, request uh, request aid. Who knows? Ariak, Rockfist, Ulrich the Slayer. Description on the Black Manes. So that's Ragnar's uh, wolf company. Um, then you get into the Death, Death Wolves. Um, Herald, Death Wolf. You've got uh, Canis Wolfborn here. Drake Slayers, Crom Dragon Gaze. Yeah, just some description and some more lore and some stories. Um, the stories in these codexes are always great. They're always worth reading through. Um, and there can be some changes to the lores as well. So worth checking out. Then we get into some of the model hobbying aspect of uh, building Space Wolf armies and talks about the uh, the pack markings. We're also probably going to have some... Uh, yeah, here's all the, uh, the great company sigils. We have tank markings, some stuff about the wolf, different wolf guard packs. And yeah, just some beautiful artwork, Fighting the Thousand Suns, our arch nemesis, 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 whatever. Now, we're getting into the rules. So, um, quick rundown, just a little bit of a... A rundown of what you're going to be uh, experiencing as you go through the book as stated we're not going to go through every single thing uh, here are your rules for your successor chapters so if you want to include them uh, in your army it just explains how you can do that what you can take what you can include from the space wolf codex in your uh, successor chapter what you can't include and just gives you some um, yeah just some stipulations so here's an example of a combat patrol Detachment abilities, so it talks about um, Swift Claws, uh, so carry over from the uh, Space Marine, the main Space Marine Codex, talking about space uh, Swift Claws gaining the uh, Berserk Charge and Headstrong abilities. And then here it talks about uh, if your army is, uh, it has the space, every model in the army has the unaligned or Space Wolves keyword, then every unit gains the combat uh, and has the Combat Doctor ability. Um, then gains the Savage Fury rule. And the Savage Fury rule is carried over uh, while the Assault Doctrine is active. For your army, each time model in this unit makes a melee attack, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. And moving in to stratagem. So only two pages. Uh, as stated before, I'm not going to talk about every single one of them just because uh, this is supposed to be a fairly quick review. Um, but I am going to talk about the ones that really stand out to me. So... Um, go for the throat. Uh, this is this is interesting. So use the stratagem in your command phase in the assault. If the assault doctrine is active for your army, until your next command phase, each time a space wolf model from your army makes an attack with a pistol me or melee weapon on an unmodified wound roll of six, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. This bon bonus is cumulative with the combat doctrine. Um, you can only use this stratagem once per battle. So two command points, your whole army gains that ability. Uh, we've seen this in other uh, past um, supplements for Space Marine uh, chapters, and they got their own, so that's pretty cool. That's a big one. Cutting the Wolf is back, so you can put a unit, uh, you can actually outflank a unit, um, an infantry unit, uh, for one command point, which is totally worth it. Um, yeah, you've got some, just some, some small tweaks, uh, Emperor's Executioner's changed a little bit. It's no longer the, uh, the four plus extra hits. Uh, you can reroll hit and wound rolls and yeah, healing bombs. So now that's a command point, one command point for your wolf priest to be able to heal care or, uh, heal models. Um, yeah, and then this is a huge one. So I'm going to talk about this one really quick because it's probably my favorite in the whole codex. Pack Hunters. So, until the end of the turn, each time a friendly Space Wolf Beast or Space Wolf Cavalry unit uh, declares a charge um, that targets the selected unit, roll one additional D6 and discard one of those dice. So, <laughs> basically the way the stratagem works, I'm going to rewind a little bit here, you use the stratagem in your charge phase, select one enemy unit, um, that is within engagement range of a unit in your Space Wolf army. So you make a charge, you get in there. Um, 
all, then what's going to happen is you're en ending up having your Space Wolf Beast and Space Wolf Cavalry, so Thunderwolf Cavalry, Fenris and Wolves, that type of stuff, um, that's going to be able to uh, roll an additional D6 for the charge and take uh, and remove one of them. Um, and then until the end of the turn, each time a friendly Space Wolf Cavalry model makes an attack with its crushing teeth and claws, or its, uh, uh, what is it, teeth and claws special rules, um, you can... Reroll uh, the wound roll. So that's pretty huge for Thunderwolves and for Fenrisian Wolves. Fenrisian Wolves got a little bit of a buff. Um, Thunderwolves got a huge buff. And Thunderwolf characters are also going to benefit from this. So this is uh, this is big. Um, two command points, totally worth it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on when we get into some of the units. Um, yeah, so then moving on from there, Cloak by the Storm changed two command points. Now it's a six inch bubble from the uh, Psyker if he casts a psychic ability from the Tempestus Discipline. Um, and it's subtract minus, uh, subtract one from uh, attack, attacks hit roll that target uh, uh, units uh, that are within his aura in his, uh, in his bubble. So um, that's pretty strong for two command points. I can see that being used a lot more. I can see myself personally taking more uh, Wolf Priests, uh, or sorry. Rune Priest, just for that reason. So Deed Worthy of a Saga, um, two command points. Basically, this allows you to take a character that does not have a Warlord trait, a Space Wolf-specific Warlord trait, um, and more specifically and only the Saga portion of that. We'll get a little bit more into that when we get into Warlord traits. But what this allows you to do is you take a character that does not have a Warlord trait and the associated Saga, and it achieves something that would unlock one of the Saga auras, um, and what it allows you to do is it uh, it now puts that saga in effect for your army at the end of the phase. So it's very strong. Um, it's going to be really good for some synergy and creating some really nasty little bubbles uh, with, with a couple of your characters. And uh, you're going to see that get used a lot. I like it. Um, these three are all just your uh, your requisition stratagems. So one will give you, uh, for one command point, uh, you can give a... Uh, character that's a uh, that's not a space wolf um, specific. It can be. It has to be a, a successor chapter. You can give a character from a successor chapter one of the space wolf items from the relic list, not the uh, the um, special issue war gear section, which is dedicated for um, successors to use. So yeah, gives you a bit of a bit more options there. Uh, you can take one of the really good ones. Um, although I think some of the better ones are actually in the special issue items. But anyways, uh, Thane of the Retinue, uh, one command point. It's just basically going to allow you to, um, you, you're going to be able to take a sergeant or pack leader for one command point and give them a piece of special issue war gear. As stated, those are pretty good. So uh, I can really see this uh, coming into effect. And we'll talk a little bit more about that once we get into the actual uh, relics. And then Warrior of Legend, you can, for one command point, this is going to be, like, this is going to be everywhere. Uh, space, every Space Wolf player should be using this. One command point pregame, give your Warlord two Warlord traits. One of those Warlord traits, the one that you use, well, specifically the one that you're using the one command point to upgrade, has to be from the Space Wolf Codex. But, yeah, great. Um, Beastial Nature. Use the stratagem in the command phase. If uh, if the combat doctrine is uh, active for your army, select one Space Wolf Infantry, Space Wolf Cavalry, or Space Wolf Biker unit from your army. Um, until the start of the next command phase, that unit gains the bonus of the Assault doc Doctrine instead of the active uh, combat doctrine. That is really good. One command point. Um, if you have a unit that gets up the table really quick and you, you want them hitting at maximum... Uh, ability that's that's going to be totally worthwhile and then there's some other uh, command points uh, like counter charge allows you to do heroic interventions up to six inches uh, because obviously there was new changes to space wolves in the uh, space marine codex um, now the units are gaining the three inch um, heroic intervention rule but um, no more no more six inches so um, but this allows you to upgrade it, and what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to, um, for one command point for a unit, or zero command points if it's a Space Wolf character using it, you're extending it to six inches. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty awesome, going to be used a lot. 
Keen Senses has changed a little bit. Um, it's one command point. You can basically, you're um, ignoring any modifiers, um, hit roll, ballistic skill, and weapon skill modifiers. Um, but you have to use it in the shooting phase. So you have to kind of have a little bit of foresight for that. And it also, uh, um, you can also ignore charge modifiers. So if you know that you're going to be charging something that has a little bit of a, um, a bonus for that, then that's, that's really big. Runic Wards, um, you use this stratagem in your opponent's psychic phase after a psychic test is passed for enemy psyker unit, uh, and you select one Space Wolf arm unit in your army uh, within 12 inches of the psyker until that you, or sorry, um, the unit you selected can attempt to deny uh, psychic power uh, by taking a deny, deny the witch test, as if it were a psyker. So good for giving a little bit more anti-psyker to your Space Wolves, maybe if you don't take a Rune Priest, or uh, yeah, it just gives you a little bit of leniency there um i should actually mention savage strike i kind of jumped over it a little bit but uh yeah in the fight phase when a space wolf unit from your army is selected to fight you can make a charge or sorry unit <laughs> if that unit made a charge move this tur this turn then the unit um basically gets um uh, one to the attack's wound roll adds one to the attack's wound roll so that's plus one to the wound roll it's one command point if the model if it's five or less models uh two for more so when you're looking at your uh, blade guard veterans stuff like that you're probably going to want to start looking at taking five instead of six uh, for that reason um it's just the same kind of idea as transhuman too for that reason so Anyways, moving on from there, we're into warlord traits. So if you have, if you're new to space wolves, the way that space wolf warlord traits have worked in the past, as of uh, recent editions at least, um, you get your your warlord trait, and that unlocks these sagas. And um, the sagas, you have to achieve these deeds. Once you've achieved these deeds, you're able to uh, you basically gain an aura, and the auras can are kind of similar or or pretty much mirror the base warlord trait so he's gaining the benefit from it which is nice and then the aura is affecting uh from for the most part core units or uh it specifies throughout so i'm uh, i'm not going to read through all of these what i am going to say is wolfkin has changed a little bit it's not nearly as powerful as it was before um i think it's still okay but i don't think that the deed that you unlock is as good so i'm kind of on the fence about that one uh, aura of Majesty, again, I want to rem remind everyone, if you are taking a named character and you're making them your Warlord, then they have pre-selected Warlord traits from the list, so uh, make sure you're following that. But uh, yeah, the one that really stands out to me, I think, um, the one that I'm, I'm the biggest fan of currently, and I mean, I'll have to play around with it and get some more playtesting done before I really, really can determine which one is truly my favorite, but at a glance, Hunter. Hunter is, it adds one to the advance and charge rolls uh, made for this Warlord. Um, the Warlord is eligible to charge in a turn in which it advanced or fell back. And if he achieves the deed, which is <laughs> pretty simple, it's charge an enemy unit with this model. Um, while a friendly Space Wolf core unit is within six inches of this model, that unit is eligible to declare a charge in a turn in which they advanced. While a friendly Space Wolf core unit with a Swift Hunter's ability, so Fenris and Wolves, Thunderwolf Cavalry, etc. Um, yeah, they're gaining... Um, sorry. And they're within six inches of this model. That unit is eligible to declare a charge in the turn that they fell back. So they can fall back and charge, which is huge. Huge. These guys, th this type of character, uh, you're looking at a Thunderwolf... Um, you're looking at a... Space Wolf Captain on a Thunder Wolf, um, Wolf Lord on a Thunder Wolf, sorry. <laughs> Let's use proper wolf terminology, Wolf Wolf, Wolf Wolf. Um, you're looking at, yeah, the Wolf Lords or Battle Leaders on Thunder Wolves, um, and then giving them the two Warlord traits. I'm probably leaning towards the Warlord trait from the Space Marine Codex that's going to give you the plus one attack and the reroll charge rolls. Plus one attack and strength on the charge and then reroll charge rolls. You throw that on top of the plus one to advance and charge. The fact that they can advance and charge because of the Swift Hunters rule. More on that soon. Um, yeah, you've got some pretty devastating uh, combinations here. And then if he manages to pre proc his deed, then for the rest of the game, he is allowing units to advance and charge, which is really going to help a heavy combat-focused army. 
so yeah, that's uh, that is my my highlight from this. I would say that is my favorite. The other ones are okay. Um, I find that one will have a saga that's really good, but the warlord trait's okay. One will have the warlord trait, which is amazing, but the saga is okay. It's like yeah, it's it's. I think the the hunter is the one that stands out the most to me. So I'll let you guys uh, determine that. And if I'm wrong, or you think I'm wrong, uh, or if you think something else is going to work really well, just uh, comment in the video below. So moving from that, we're going into the relic section. So again, I'm just going to pick out a few here that I think are uh, are really strong. Some of them um, retain their names from previous editions and uh, just had some minor tweaks to their rules. And some of them are completely reworked and some of them are completely new. So uh, let's get into these. So getting into the relics, um, as stated, some have changed. Um, you've got the Wolfen Stone, which has been reworked quite significantly. Um, what this is now doing is the bearer uh, has the following ability, Beastal Charge Aura. While Friendly Space Wolf core unit is within six inches of the bearer, you can reroll the charge roll made for that unit. Um, yeah, that's which is which is great. Uh, but once per battle, at the start of your uh, fight phase, the bearer can invoke the spirits of the wolfen. If it does, select one friendly space wolf unit within six inches of the bearer that has the Savage of Fury ability. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, uh, the activate or the additional hit score caused by Savage Fury is triggered on a five plus. Pretty strong. It's, it's, I don't know if it's better. I don't know if it's worse. It's one of those ones that's just, it confuses me and I don't know if I like it. And because I don't know if I like it, it just weirds me out. Anyways, let's move past that. Uh, armor of Russ is uh, two plus four, two plus uh, armor save, four plus invulnerable save. Great for a character that you can't throw a um, storm shield on. Most characters have a four plus invulnerable save as it stands anyways. So, whether or not you really want to do this is, uh, I don't know, I think it's debatable, it's up in the air. But at the start of the fight phase, um, you can select one enemy unit with an engagement range of the bearer. That unit is um, not eligible to fight until um, all units from your army have done so. So that is a really good secondary part that can really th mess with people. I find this would probably be better on a, like a supporting character that you throw in there and the opponent doesn't suspect to do something like that. Really good. Um, so then, yeah, there's just a couple different new weapons. Black Death is back. It confuses me also because, um, you can upgrade a Mastercrafted Power Axe or Power Axe or Mastercraft Power Sword or Power Sword to have this ability. But if you do so, then it's dropping it to damage one. If you do it for the Mastercrafted weapons, not damage two. Not sure I like that, but it does give you the D6 additional attack. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and then there's there's a couple other things. Uh, pale or sorry, pelt of the Beowulf. Um, each time an attack is made against this bear, subtract one from the hit and wound roll. That could be really good as a secondary uh, warlord trait to take with your character if you want to make them really durable, especially if they have like a storm shield on them uh, and they're on riding a thunderwolf with that T5. So yeah, and then moving on from there, uh, I'm not going to cover the ones that are are obvious <laughs> we're not going to talk about these i, I am going to just more focus on uh, talking about this one specifically uh the frost weapon so previously in space wolf codexes frost weapons were just weapons that we gained um you had frost claws with plus one strength you had um swords and axes that were better than their power weapon equivalent now uh, Space Wolves lost that. That's no longer a thing uh, because we're using the base Space Marine Codex. Um, we no longer have that as a sort of our, our, our bonus. So going forward, um, yeah, we, you have to spend either a command point to, give it, to, to get an extra relic or you have to um, use this as your relic. And yeah, so what it's going to do is it upgrades the damage. Uh, the strength and damage characteristic of a weapon that you upgrade, but it can only be put on a specific list of weapons, which is Lightning Claw, and if it, you put it on Lightning Claws, like the pair, it does count. It does work towards a pair of Lightning Claws. Mastercrafted uh, Power Axe, Power Sword, Power Axe, 
or master crafted power sword all those things um those basically uh you're not getting thunder hammers so don't think about it i already did and i was sad when i found out i couldn't um but yeah that that would just be nasty but yeah plus one damage on master crafted weapons is pretty strong i can see you throwing this weapon on your um blade guard veteran sergeants uh just because you're upping that damage to a three damage ap minus three three damage and plus two to the strength it's uh yeah with his base like five attacks or six attacks whatever it is yeah that's that's gonna be really gross uh, runic weapons this is just an upgrade for a librarian um add one to the nine of the t witch tests uh for the bearer when you give a model um this relic select one of the following weapons uh and it's basically a force axe force stab force sword and add one to the strength characteristic of that weapon um and it's considered to be a relic i don't see you ever i don't know maybe you will i i, I probably won't but let me know if you do um moving from that you have the tempestus discipline so i'm again not going to go through every single one of them um i'm going to talk about some some one of the ones that i think is the best um but the the big thing about these is that we did see a drop with psychic abilities going down to warp charge six um or seven ish um nothing like unreasonable this is true in our book as well so now we have yeah, warp charge six across the board for most stuff, which is great. Um, yeah, going from yeah some unreasonable casting values for some not so good spells to uh, easy casting values for great spells. Yeah, this is this is going to be big, uh, especially when you like factor in chief librarian and such to uh, to your decisions here. So. Um, yeah, so Instincts Awoken I want to talk about. It's a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select uh, one friendly Space Wolf unit within um, 18 inches of the Psyker. And then until your next Psychic phase, each time a model um, in that unit attacks, uh, the Assault Doctrine is considered to be in effect, essentially. So, um, yeah. If the Assault Doctrine is already active... Uh, your army in your army, then um, an unmodified wound roll of six improves the armor per penetration by an additional one. So, really strong um, warp charge value of six. Totally worth taking uh, if you're going to throw a uh, a psyker into your list. I mean, not psyker. They they're not psykers. They're space wolves. They don't do that. Um, yeah. Backpedal. Okay, so then there's, um, yeah, chapter approved rules. Not going to get into it too much, but there's some really cool, fluffy secondary options uh, that are very specific. People have mixed feelings about these. Some people think that uh, they're too gamey and that they're not, uh, they don't like the fluff mixing in with the competitive play, and I, I love it. I think, I think it's great. I think when I show up to a tournament, um, I want to be able to use these, and I understand that some are written better than others, but if G we have to wait to see what the other codexes bring. We have to wait to see if these are all on an even playing field. If they aren't, and they're horribly unbalanced, then I totally understand um, tournaments putting a, a cap on that and, and, and doing away with that. But until then, we don't know. Crusade rules, starting to get into the army, uh, starting to get into collecting uh, a army or just want to get back into the love of uh, the lore and the, the fun of the hobby, the fun joy of the hobby. Crusades are great for that. I think, um, yeah, I think I think this is really great for beginners and I think this is really great for people that are trying to like reignite um, their love for the, the hobby. This is a great way to get in, start an army and slowly build it up. Um, and then you have your requisitions, battle traits associated to your crusade rules, deeds making, crusade relics, and finally, name generators if you're creating some characters. So moving from there, we're going into data sheets. So this is going to be, again, another quick little rundown. I don't want to talk about every single unit. I'm going to talk about the big ones that have changed, and I'm going to talk about the ones that have stayed the same. And yeah, I'm going to talk about the ones that have fallen some have fallen. Um, Berserk Charge, Headstrong, Swift Hunters, 
three different special rules. Uh, Headstrong and Berserk Charge are just in line with um, your typical rules that you saw found in Blood Claws and Swift Claws um, from taking Wolf Guard in your units. Headstrong essentially allows them to uh, um, prevent them from charging the closest target, and Berserk Charge um, is the giving them the additional add one tax to the uh, the characteristics of the model, but it does not apply to the Wolf Guard. They actually added that in there, so no more Wolf Guard with. Uh, lightning claws which were wolf claws doing an insane amount of attacks swift hunters allows you to um, uh, charge in the turn that you advance in addition each time this uh, unit makes a pile in or consolidate move it can move in an additional one inch pretty great so now let's get into the data sheets shall we now we're moving on to the units within the army um yeah, so obviously all of your basic Space Wolf or basic Space Marine units, um, which we gained access to several new ones as well, but uh, they're in the Space Marine Codex. But all of our Space Wolf unique stuff is we, we will find in here. Um, so you have Logan, Logan on um, the sled, Santa on his sleigh. Um, Note that this gained the Swift Hunter's rule so it can advance and charge. Um, it also... Um, yeah, I, I think there's some viability in taking this now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I think it's just so, so it's such a weird model, but at the same time, I think it'd be so cool with a bunch of like Fenrisian wolves and Thunderwolf cavalry and maybe a battle leader on Thunderwolf just running around. That'd be, if you went heavy Thunderwolves, that'd be really cool. Nial, Storm Rider, or Storm Caller, sorry. Um, you also notice that uh, um, Ulrich and him gained the um, their innately built-in rule of, uh, and I think it was most likely included in their points, but the ability to um, be upgraded and to a chief librarian, uh, the, the to the leaders of their uh, their divisions. So yeah, that's there. Uh, Bjorn the Fell Handed, note that uh, he did gain the Duty Eternal rule, so uh, damage characteristics, uh, damage, incoming damage is reduced by one um, to a minimum of one. That's going to be big on a T8 character that uh, can't be targeted because he's a character. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, targeting works differently now too, but I think this is going to be really interesting. Um I don't know. We'll we'll see how he plays out. I always love putting him in just because he's such a cool model. Arjax in there. Ulrich the Slayer again mentioned he can chant the extra litany. Um, yeah, there's a couple little uh, little changes and tweaks just to bring them in line with the current rules. Ragnar Blackmane is still a beast, beautiful model. I'm not going to talk too much about this guy because most Space Wolf players uh, picked him up the moment that they could. He is now available by himself. Uh, no no need to buy the. Uh, the box set anymore which i didn't really appreciate personally just because i'm not a huge uh i don't find myself using the uh the phobus stuff too often so i think the uh, the assault intercessors are the real winners to be accompanying this man but uh or blade guard veterans but anyways then we have crom dragon gaze he's meh, uh herald death wolf um i think he's still got a place i like his his special rules are still pretty solid um and, I mean, the aura ability to have Space Wolf characters, or Cavalry and Space Wolf Beast units within six inches of this model um, can use his leadership. Um, so Fenrisian Wolves, I mean, that's that's a big deal. Um, yeah, I mean, he's still, he's okay. Kenneth Wolfborn is really good, uh, just because, again, the, the changes to Thunderwolf Cavalry. Um, and ov obviously these characters that are running Thunderwolf um, I'm, I'm going to stop saying this now, but they have the Swift Hunters special role. You're seeing it on the Wolf Lord, on Thunderwolf, Battle Leader, everybody. So they can advance and charge, which is huge. Um, yeah, and they have the T5. I mean, they're up to seven wounds for the Wolf Lord. Wolf Lord on Thunderwolf, seven wounds is it's not, not anything to laugh at. I mean, that, it's pretty that's pretty durable, especially with a... Um, with the right relics or combination of warlord traits or a storm shield, uh, you can make a pretty punchy boy. Uh, Wolfguard battle leader, blood claws. So again, some small changes. The two wounds, obviously, uh, that we got across the board for all the Space Marine uh, models. But uh, uh, yeah, 
moving from there, you've got Grey Hunters, Wolfguard, Lucas the Trickster. Um, it's got some cool little rules. I don't know. I don't ever run him. If you guys do and you, you find that he's real, you think that this is a big change or that he, he's running, he, he's worth his points, let me know. Because uh, I, I just personally, I just never use him. Uh, Wolfguard Terminators. Um, obviously, they, they threw the Wolfguard Terminators in here because of the mixed unit abilities, etc. The mixed weapon options and all that. Um, pretty great. Pretty great unit. Um, Hounds of Morkai. Brand spanking new. Um, these guys are... Um, they're just Reavers, essentially, but they have some runic abilities that helps them mess with Psykers and helps them hunt down Psykers. So um, I'm not going to get into it too much, all of their rules, because they were obviously on, uh, they were obviously showcased on the uh, community website for Warhammer or for Games Workshop. So um, while an enemy Psyker unit is within 18 inches, this unit subtract one from the Psyche test taken, and while they're within six inches, it's uh, you subtract an additional one, which is pretty sweet. Um... And yeah, they're they're meant for basically hunting down. I, I think maybe a small pack of five of them getting in behind the enemy line and trying to track down like a, a weaker psyker would be uh, worth it, I think. Um, now Wolfen. How can we take a moment of silence for the Wolfen? All right, that's long enough. So the Wolfen are I don't want to say that they they I don't want to say they're not useful still. They're still strong. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all of the changes on them because everybody was talking about this. If you're involved in any of the Space Wolf community, you're going to you're going to notice a change if you're used to running these guys. And most players were running them in a competitive list. Um, they no longer have the advance and charge ability, which is a bit of a hit. Um, they also no longer can fight even fight when they die even if they've already made attacks that turn they've pretty much across the board tried to remove that rule so that um you're only able to fight if you haven't already fought that turn um but that was a huge thing for them because you could just throw a suicide squad in have them kill something huge and scary in the enemy army and uh and then have the enemy counter strike them and then have them kill the unit that counter struck and just hobble your opponent's army. So it's a big deal. Um, they did have some small tweaks to the rules. Um, they, they do count as always being in the Assault Doctrine going forward. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think they can't perform any actions. That's also a big change. Or, well, not a big change, but that's a big, big rule for them. Um, I think they're still good. I still think you're going to see them in armies. I just don't think they're as great as they once were. And I think um, they, they did take a pretty big hit. Um, yeah. But on the plus side, um, oh, yeah, you've got your Wolf and Dreadnought out here. Let's get to uh, what I really want to talk about. Murderfang, Cyberwolves. I mean, I don't know if it's worth the points, but, I mean, you... you you could take a unit of them. I think they can take up to five, yeah. And then five to 15 Fenris and Wolves. A big blob of Fenris and Wolves accompanying, um, what is it, Candice Wolfborn? Uh, or Herald for the, uh, sorry, for the, Herald for the leadership uh, aura. Possibly a good thing. Thunderwolf Cavalry are big time improved. Um, Advance and Charge is such a huge deal for them. That's such a big deal. Their core... Um, <laughs> They're just going to be in every single list. If you don't own any, get some. If you're playing Space Wolves, if you own some, get more. Um, these guys are awesome. They're awesome. Um, throwing on Storm Shields and um, a plethora of weapons. I mean, you have several different options. You can keep them cheap, but I mean, I prefer Thunder Hammers on half the squad and then maybe axes or swords on the other half, but... They're going to be really, really strong guys. So, I mean, they're four wounds now. They're not four, three wounds anymore. So, um, yeah, the advance and charge is going to be big, and especially with the stratagems. Uh, yeah, so moving on from them, you have your Sky Claws, your Long Fangs, Storm Fang Gunships, Storm Wolf. Um, Storm Fang Gunships, Storm Wolf. I'm going to talk about it a little bit at the end um, in regards to some, some gaminess that you can do with them. You will notice that the, um, what is it, the Melta Array. So the you did not gain two twin multi-Meltas on the side of this thing if you thought you did. Um, 
that would have been awesome, but at, especially with the changes to multi meltas. But uh, melts are raised D three shots now, so still good, just not as great. But the points reflected also. Um, these are just such heavy point units. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you're gonna want to include one. I do. I like to take the Stormfang. I like to hunt characters with it. I also like to uh, hurt something big right off the bat. Then you have your Stormfang gunship, Stormwolf. Um, great units. Um, they're expensive as all hell. Um, I don't know if every player wants to take them, but I sure like to take the Stormfang gunship in my lists. They definitely have a place, but um, I think uh, there, there's some gaminess you can do with these. I'm going to talk about it in a little bit, but um, big change. If you thought you were getting two twin multi meltas back on this thing with the change to multi meltas. Uh, you're wrong. It's a Melter Array now, heavy D3, um, strength 8, AP minus 4, D6 damage, and then it gains the Melter special rule. The plus 2 damage if it's within half range. Um, still good, and the points reflect it, but, I mean, they are still super expensive. I mean, you're looking at around 400 points for these things, which is just nuts, but... Um, they are durable and uh, they do do work if you play them right and they're great for hunting characters which is what I do with them and there is a little bit of a trick that you can do with these guys which I'll, uh, I'll talk about uh, in a few minutes or in a minute or so. Um, going into weapons profiles you have all of your weapons statistics. Um, yeah, that's a beautiful picture that's from the that's from the book. Points values, the breakdown, uh, again, in line with all the new the new books are great. They've got, uh, they make this really easy to list, build a list. It tells you all the options and how many points they are, and that's that. Just done. That's it. Everything's in one spot. No flipping around. And, yeah, and then glossary and reference. So, um, just a really quick little uh, synopsis. Great book. Great models. Um I love this army. I just absolutely love this army. Uh, the models are... The army... A lot of people think that uh, this is going to hurt them. I think it's going to help them a lot. I think uh, Sp Space Marines, all in all, um, may have... Um, they, they've been coming up and up and up and up and up. Um, and I think this is... I don't think it's, it's bad changes. I think they're good, subtle changes. I don't think it's going to put them at the... I mean, when the dust settles and all the books are out, do I think this is going to be a top codex? No, but I do I think it's going to be a bottom codex? Absolutely not. I think if it's played right and you play your and you list build, you know, with with the intent of running the army is the way that Games Workshop has sort of pushed you um, with the rules being the way they are um, and all of their special rules. Then, and you're using the right stratagems at the right moments. This army is going to be extremely devastating one thing uh, the, the two things i think think to take away really think about how you're going to build your um your wolf lord uh what you're going to do with that character do not um overpass or pass over the uh thunder wolf uh wolf lord on thunder wolf do not pass that character over there's going to be some really strong combinations with that um especially with the advance in charging now and then also um yeah, just utilizing the actual Space Marine Codex and the units that we just gained access to, um, you know, stuff like Blade Guard, uh, sorry, uh, Blade Guard veterans and stuff like that. You can you can really do some damage with this army um, going forward. And um, one quick little thing I do want to mention: <laughs> it's in regards to the stratagem I mentioned before, um, giving your. Um, Space Wolves the ability to roll three, or sorry, your Thunder Wolves and Fenris and Wolves the ability to roll three d six and take the the highest. Um, where are we? I'm all backwards now. Looked at too many codexes in my day. Okay, so here we are. Uh, so when we're talking about the pack hunters and we're talking about using this special rule, um, you'll notice that here it says that a Space Wolf unit from your army is within engagement range. The way that the charge phase works, if you take, this is this is kind of tricky, and this is also pending any FAQs, but if you take a Space Wolf vehicle, and I'm looking at either the new um, the new speeders, or if you take something like the 
uh, maybe even your Stormfang gunship. Um, you're going to be flying him in to get him in position to nuke something turn one anyways. Um, switch it to hover mode. Go 20 inches. Move this thing down into a range where it can successfully charge a unit or do this with, again, with your like speeders. Get them into range where they can charge a unit. Successfully make the charge with the unit. Set your recently advanced Thunderwolves and Thunderwolf character riding characters in a position where they have advanced and are in a prime spot, possibly with a um, chaplain or a wolf priest chanting the litany to give them the additional uh, plus two to their charge rolls and advance them into kill zone, the kill zone. And then have your um, unit that you've now charged proc this stratagem, and now you're rolling those 3d6 to charge. If the enemy puts stuff on the front line, you are guaranteed getting a uh, turn one charge with these units even on with you going first. If they go first, you're already probably going to get it, and you don't need to be that gamey. But if they, uh, yeah, I mean, if they give you the ability, go for the throat and uh, do what Space Wolves do and uh, and just smash things with axes and hammers and swords and uh, teeth and claws and ex all that fun stuff. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of command points to do this, but uh, totally worth it. Love the book. Love the army. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned a few things. Let us know in the comments if you would like us to cover more stuff. If you'd like us to change things about our reviews, let us know. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Sponsored by... <laughs>